Good evening and thanks for joining us for 41 NBC News at 11. I'm Ariel Schiller. Tucker Sargent has the night off. Our top story tonight at 11, U.S. Senator John Ossoff paid a visit to Wilkinson County as work begins on the county's first ever public sewer system. Today, the senator confirmed President Biden officially signed into law the $6.3 million to begin construction on the project. Ossoff says construction on the quality of life project will start with the youth of Wilkinson County in mind. The kind of infrastructure that will keep families healthy, that will help businesses function, that will attract investment and jobs to this community. And I want to let you know that we are beginning with Wilkinson County Public Schools. Because our kids deserve it. The mayor of McIntyre, Vicki Horn, says the project should be completed within the next two and a half to three years. The founder of the food delivery app, Waiter, is helping to launch a new app that connects Georgia skilled workers with jobs. It's called Boom Nation. The creators say it's built for certified blue collar workers like welders, electricians and construction workers. The app helps trade workers find jobs nearby. Plus, workers can use the app to communicate with the employer while they're on while on their own at the job site. When a Georgia skilled worker goes on the job, that employer gives him an employee number and then he gets a paycheck. If the employer wants to communicate with that worker, then the employer has got to either text that worker or find some other means of communicating. Boom Nation not only allows that Georgia worker to find the job or the Georgia employer to hire that worker, but then we will allow them the platform to communicate on the job. Four Friends first created and launched the app last year, and a new version will be available in April. You can download Boom Nation in the Apple or Google Play App Store. It's free to create a profile, but employers pay to post jobs. In other local news, the cherry blossom trees are one of the big draws of the festival, and it took some time for them to bloom, but they're finally blooming. I spoke with Visit Macon about where you can find the blooming trees, and a festival goer about her excitement for all things cherry blossom. Some people come to the Cherry Blossom Festival for the entertainment, some people come for the food, and some people come to see the beautiful cherry blossom trees. Angela is originally from Macon, and she says she's attending the festival for all it has to offer. Over the years, I've attended several events, so I was just really excited. Got a few friends from Warner Robins to come and join me, so we just wanted to have a night out on the town. Aaron Buzza is the COO and Vice President of Development for Visit Macon. He says sometimes it's hard to plan the festival around when the trees will bloom. Cold weather delayed the trees blooming for the start of the festival, but now they're blooming all over Macon. Past Ingleside Village and you head toward Ridge, there's a wonderful display, um, kind of equidistant between uh, Pierce and Ridge, and then through all of Wesleyan Woods. Buzza says everyone who walks through the visitor center wants to see the trees. He says they had a packed tour group who couldn't get enough of the blooming trees. People were just you know, pressing at the windows, looking out at the, at the trees, and so that was a lot of fun. And, and so it's, it's energizing for us because obviously you know, we're excited, but then you get that much more excited when everybody walking through the visitor center wants to see the trees and wants to talk about the experience. Angela says she's excited to see the blooming trees and recommends everyone go out and enjoy the festival. Check out everything. It's just the best place to be this time of year. Just come to Macon, George. It's where it's at. It's where it's happening. Visit Macon says this weekend is the perfect time to see the cherry blossom trees blooming. If you want to look at the trees from the comfort of your own home, Visit Macon has a bloom cam on their website. Or if you want to go and see them, they have a map to find them on their website makinga.org. And there's a full schedule of events this weekend for the 40th Cherry Blossom Festival. Tomorrow you can enjoy pink pancakes again at Luther Williams Stadium from 7 to 10.30 a.m. Tickets are $5 for adults and three for children. There's also the fifth annual Bike the City Pink event. The free bike ride through the city starts at 7.30 a.m. at the Tubman Museum and it will end at the Pancake Breakfast. The Cherry Blossom Boxing Show starts at 1 p.m. at Freedom Park. 
and food truck frenzy runs until 7 p.m. along 3rd Street. Nico Moon takes the stage at 8 p.m. as well. And on Sunday, the festival wraps up with tunes and balloons at Middle Georgia State University. Macon Pops will perform Michael Jackson's Thriller album from 6 until 8 p.m. Admission is $5 for adults. And over at Carolyn Creighton Park, the Grapevine Band takes the stage at 8 p.m. And don't forget, if you missed the Cherry Blossom Festival Parade or you just want to see it again, you can. Enjoy all the marching bands, floats, and festival royalty from the comfort of your own home. The parade airs on 41 NBC Saturday at 7 p.m. and it will also air tomorrow and Sunday morning at 10 on Bounce TV Macon. Other ha events happening this weekend, it's time to celebrate the architect of rock and roll. The fourth annual Little Richard Festival is one of several events happening across Georgia this weekend. The festival is this Saturday from 11 until 2 p.m. at Jefferson Long Park on Pursley Street in Macon. There will be live music, fun stations for kids, food trucks, and local vendors. Organizers share what made Little Richard stand out from the crowd. He will close out arenas and everything because people love the way he sang, the way he danced, even his style was eclectic. You know, he wore the makeup and the wigs and the, he literally had a persona that was unlike anything everybody has any, ever seen before. During the event, you can get a guided tour of the Little Richard House on Craft Street and enjoy a Pleasant Hill walking tour. Also happening Saturday, Macon Black Tech's pilot program, Macon Thon, will be holding, holding a demo day. The event gives groups in the program an opportunity to pitch product ideas and win prizes. The winning team will receive feedback on their pitch as well as seed funding. Groups also have a chance to win an audience prize through crowdfunding where people vote with their dollars. The in-person and live event starts at 10 a.m. You can head to makeinthon.com for tickets and locations. And the 52nd annual Friends of the Library Spring Book Sale continues Saturday. The sale includes thousands of new and used books. The book sale is at River Street Corner Center on Riverside Drive. It's open tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. and books will be half price starting at noon. Mercer University is also kicking off its annual Barathon Dance Marathon tomorrow. The university organization known as Miracle says the funds will help pay for treatments for kids at the Beverly Knight Olson Children's Hospital. The student group holds fundraisers all year. Three Mercer seniors who will soon be physicians are helping organize the dancing event and this year's goal is to raise $100,000. We like to think of it as a family so it brings everyone at Mercer together for a great cause and you know we sh um, show them our miracle kids and you know we show them what we're raising our money for. The Barathon Dance Marathon kicks off tomorrow at 11 a.m. at Cruz Plaza on the Mercer campus. Everyone is invited to donate and dance or you can make a donation online at mumiracle.org. Still ahead on 41 NBC News at 11, we'll have a look at your weekend forecast with meteorologist Aaron Lowry. Plus, the Boys and Girls Club of Central Georgia held its first ever women's leadership brunch today. We'll take you there. And the Atlanta Braves World Series trophy tour made a stop in Warner Robins today. Arshaz Pirani will give us a look at the hardware later in sports. Across Georgia tonight, a social media video of an unruly passenger at a ticket counter at Atlanta's Hartsfield Jackson International has gone viral. It's also key evidence in the criminal charges against the 44 year old passenger. Savannah Louie reports. I need that phrase, bro. A horrifying video inside Hartsfield Jackson International Airport takes off. Two minutes of fighting. <laughs> including a traveler punching a Southwest employee in his face. The crew trying to break up the fight. Everybody's surprised and shocked that it even got that far of the man putting hands on a worker. Airport worker Travis Johnson says the video flying across social media hits home. I just said it couldn't have been me. As Atlanta police tell CBS 46 what led to the appalling attack, saying 44-year-old Courtney Drummond was on a Southwest flight but refused to comply with flight attendants as the plane taxied from the gate to the tarmac. You gotta go. Aggressive behavior forced the pilot to return to the gate. 
Crews took Drummond off the plane. That's when video appears to show Drummond threaten a Southwest worker several times before punching him, yelling at other crew members. Hey, Come on, man. Don't do that. And later removing his own jacket and shirt. The pandemic is kind of crazy right now, so it's kind of making everybody else kind of crazy. Several airport workers say they worry for their safety. They need to get big on security because my thing is that shouldn't even happen. TSA shouldn't just be in one area. They should be all through the airport, so just in case something like that happened. Police took Drummond to Clayton Jail for a simple battery, battery and obstruction. She called security 10 minutes ago. The FAA says there were nearly 6,000 reports of unruly passengers in 2021, the worst year on record. Most of the incidents were related to passengers refusing to wear masks. In other state news, a coalition of legal scholars and activists have issued a candidacy challenge against Georgia Rep Republican Marjorie Taylor Greene over her actions before the January 6th insurrection. The challenge points to a video in which she said she opposed the transfer of power after the 2020 election, claiming President Biden did not win. The coalition also cited her social media posts and news reports about meetings with January 6 rally organizers. The group says Green is disqualified for running for re-election under the 14th Amendment, which pro prohibits lawmakers from returning to office if they supported an insurrection. In response, Green said Thursday she has never encouraged political violence and never will. Defense attorneys want charges dropped for a former Georgia prosecutor connected to the Ahmad Arbery case. They say there is no evidence that former District Attorney Jackie Johnson discouraged police from making arrests in Arbery's killing. Wednesday, her lawyers filed for a judge to dismiss the misdemeanor charge that she hindered police investigating the February 2020 shooting. And after the break, 41 NBC's Daybreak meteorologist Aaron Lowry has a look outside. When we come back, stay with us. Welcome back. The Boys and Girls Club of Central Georgia held its first ever women's leadership brunch today. Ladies in several leadership roles throughout Macon gathered at Yala on College Street. Keynote speakers included District Attorney Anita Howard, Justice Verda Colvin, and many more. Um, and we also had Aaliyah Simmons, who was honored at the, the brunch as well. And we spoke with D.A. Howard about why it's important to mentor young women. You can't have the second and the third if you never have the first. And so being the first uh, female district attorney for this area, it comes uh, with, a, you know, with a lot of excitement from the community, but it also comes with great responsibility. During the brunch, the women also discussed the importance of mentorship. The Boys and Girls Club says it's important for everyone to be a mentor to those who seek help. It's time now to, to look at sports. Here's 41 NBC's Shaz Pirani. Shaz?